What would you say if I were to say all restaurants are the same? My belief, all restaurants are the same. What would you say? You would conclude that I probably don't know too many restaurants. Correct? You wouldn't conclude all restaurants are the same just because I have that belief, because you've been to many different restaurants. If I were to say all daddies are the same, they're men, they're married to a woman, they have a kid. They're all the same. What do you think? In a superficial way, I can see your point, but I'd have to conclude you don't know too many daddies. You don't really understand what you're talking about. So from a rational point of view, if you actually looked at all the different religions, clearly they're not the same. Because if they were the same, they would produce the same results. Then every country would be equally blessed and prosperous and peaceful, and that's not true. The only countries in the world where people are getting on boats and risking their lives to, to get to are Australia and Canada and New Zealand. What are they? They're Judeo-Christian countries. Nobody's risking their lives to get into North Korea where they outlaw God or Cuba. They're fleeing those places. So if the results are different, how can we rationally believe it's the same? That doesn't make sense, right? Okay, now that's not the way though that I would answer an Asian. If I'm talking to an Asian, I want to find a point of agreement, right? Relationship is the most important thing and nobody likes somebody that just contradicts them all the time. They say all religions are the same. You say, no, they're not. How do you like it if you hang out with a friend and you say, oh, gee, it's cold in this church. They say, no, it's hot. Hey, let's go have pizza today. No, no, I want Chinese. <laughs> you say turn right, they turn left. You say up, they say down. Pretty soon you get a new friend. Is that right? Because it's annoying. It's annoying to be with someone who's constantly not listening to you and contradicting you. So personally, I would say, you know what? Maybe, can you think, maybe there are some reasons why a rational person might believe all religions are the same. What do you think? Any reason? Yes? Yeah, they don't teach you to do wrong things. I mean, we're assuming a good religion. There are satanic religions and things like that. Okay, but they, they teach you to do good. They teach you not to do bad. Okay, good. Anything else? So you've never done this, huh? You've never put your heart into the sinner's heart. You never put yourself in their shoes. I think about them. I think about what they are thinking. I cry out for souls. I want them to know what I have. We get one life to get this right. We got to find out the truth before we die and live according to that. All right, let me help you out. We're limited in time. Are all religions the same? Well, Buddha was a prince, and what did he teach? He looked out of his princely palace one day, and he saw, even though he was sheltered by his father in a very luxurious, safe life, he looked down and he saw a, a sick person, an old person, a dead person, and a Brahmin priest, a Hindu priest. And a revelation came to him. First noble truth, in life there is suffering. And all the Asians across the continent said, Buddha, you are right. This is rational. This definitely makes sense. You see? And so what did Buddha teach? Most good religions are very similar because they teach this. Number one, they teach the problem. Tukka is the Pali word. The, uh, I put the Thai word there, Tuk. Tukka, the first noble truth is in life there is suffering. Anybody disagree with that? Huh? No, of course not. That's, that's Genesis chapter 3, right? Suffering, death came into the world. How did it come into the world? Second noble truth, Samuttai. What is the origin of suffering? The Brahmin priest asked Buddha, well, why are we all suffering? Buddha said, because of your karma. Because of your karma. There's a more theologically elaborate way of explaining it. You have to get the book to, I'm not, I can't do it today. But basically in common parlance, karma is the problem. Karma is sin. Nobody wants more karma. And uh, just to prove to you that karma is a bad thing, in Thailand, when somebody dies, you don't get an invitation, you know, Mr. Dang uh, is dead. That's rude to say that way. So they will say, Mr. Dang has reached his karma, meaning karma is now taking revenge on all the things that Mr. Dang did and said and thought. So karma is typically a bad thing. 
Do you agree with this? Yeah. It's, again, Genesis chapter 3. How did suffering and death come into the world? Genesis 3 says, because our first parents, Adam and Eve, committed sin. They disobeyed God. They rebelled against God. Then Nirod is the third noble truth. Buddha says, the goal of your life is to escape the law of karma. Make it your aim. He's your example. He left his palace. He left his family. He left his wealth. He did anything to search for a way out. I find this to be a model Asian. I don't know too many Asians who would do what Buddha did. Willing to leave everything, including money, including his religion. He was a Hindu first. And he searched for a way out of karma. Well, what did he recommend? Mak. Mak means uh, the path, the eightfold path. And the first step to that is to keep the sin, sin, not sin, S-I-N, but sin, uh, to keep the, uh, the precepts, the golden rules. Five for the lay person, 227 for monks, 311 if you're a woman. Is that interesting? Because Westerners think that Buddhism is this peaceful, harmonious religion, but they never get this teaching that uh, it's actually quite sexist, it's quite unfair, it's skewed towards the men. Now, I had somebody uh, uh, on some website somewhere attack me on this, and they said, no, 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 the Buddha was thinking about the women, and he was, he was trying to help the women out and give them more, better rules. Absolute nonsense. All Buddhists who go to Buddhist school, and we learn this stuff in Thailand, we know the story. The story is Buddha was approached by women, can we enter the Sangha, the, the religious community. Buddha did not want women to enter the Sangha, but he felt pressed, he felt forced. And so he said, yes, but basically I'll make it so impossible for you to become enlightened that you'll never even try. And so he gave them more rules, 311 rules. That was the reason why he did that. All right? And the Four Noble Truths, what do they do? Obviously, these are like the 613 commandments of Moses, isn't it? Reminds us of all the rule keeping that people have to do. And so what do the rules do? They prepare the heart, they explain the problem, preparing the heart for humility to receive the solution. Buddha never even gave the solution. He says, basically, just try to keep these things, but most of you won't be able to do it. Let me just give you the uh, five rules, and I think that's all we can do. Are we out of time? We are. Okay. All right. This is fine. I'm going to end on this, on this uh, part here. Buddha helped Christians by doing a thorough job of explaining the problem. Rather than being so anti-Buddhist and anti-Buddhism, respect the fact that Buddha was trying his best. He was not a prophet of God. He was not a, a biblical writer. He did a good job of explaining the problem. But he himself had sinned. He himself left his wife and child. So now today, the good news that I have to share with you is there is a solution, that Jesus is the only sinless one in the world. And if you don't want to keep suffering in your life, there is a way to shorten the suffering, and it's through Jesus Christ. Does it make sense now when I say He is the way, the truth, and the life? Of course it does, because He's the only one without a, without a debt on His account so He can pay for my debt. And you will know it. When you pray today and accept Jesus Christ, you will know it because your heart will change. Something will happen and a miracle will happen to your life this week. And so let's all stand, and I'm going to uh, invite you to come and pray and get to know Jesus today in a personal way. Whether you're in your seat or up here, you can pray this prayer, and God will hear you. He will answer you. Let's say this, say this at conversation level loud enough that you can hear yourself. Would you please say this to God? Close your eyes and pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the truth. Thank you for loving me despite my sins. I don't want to walk away from you anymore. I'm coming to Jesus. Save me. Heal me. Help me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. And because of that, I have new life. I am forgiven. I'm not trapped in my past. Thank you for a good future that you have for me. I promise to live for you in Jesus' name. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.